Welcome back Gingies to a new video. Today I'm gonna give you an updated video settings guide. So let's get into it. Hey, you there. While the video is loading, you have some time to subscribe and like the video. I would really appreciate that. Thank you and enjoy the video. Okay, before this video even starts, I just wanna say that I already have a video settings guide. Um, that video is still pretty decent, but like I said in that video, uh, I was still trying to figure out my settings and I usually don't change my settings a lot, but CS2 just got released then, so I didn't really know what settings to use. I feel like I've found really stable settings now, uh, which I won't change anymore. But if you're using the settings that I used in previous video and you like them, you don't really need to change them. They're still really good settings and they're still really stable. I just changed a few things. All right, so you may have watched my previous settings guide or you're just discovering me now and you're just watching this one. I will go through all the settings, but I have timestamps. So you can go to the settings that you want to look at or that you might think that need changing. That way, the people that have watched my previous video can just change the ones that I have changed and the ones that haven't watched my video yet have all my settings in one video. Also, I will be marking the settings that I have changed compared to the previous video, so it's easier to figure out for my subscribers and the people that have already watched my previous video to see which ones I changed. My settings are very similar to pros their settings um, so you could also go and look at their settings i can put the link to the website that has professionals their settings down below but with this i would like to add that i might not be a professional player but i'm pretty good uh, i have hit global in mm i have hit global in wingman and i have hit level 10 on face it and well i'm not a professional player so rpcs probably are way similar than your PC would be similar to a professional player's PC because obviously they have really good PCs and they can just put everything on high and not have FPS problems. Uh, for most of us that is not the case so that's why I would recommend watching my video and not just copying uh, pros their settings. So let us start off with the video settings, just the normal ones. On this page, I haven't really changed anything. Um, I've just, my brightness is 100. I've been playing on 4x3, 2080, which I've been playing for a really long time right now. Like I said in the previous video, if you want, you can also try out 2080, 10, uh, 24. Uh, I've used that one for a pretty long while as well. Uh, and I really liked that one, but I feel like this one was just, um, competitively better so that's why i started using this one again uh, of course full screen and refresh rate you just put on the highest refresh rate that you have for me that's 240 or 239 for some reason it doesn't doesn't go to 240 just put it on the highest one that you have all right the advanced video settings page here i did change quite a few settings but like I said, I will mark those so you can change them easily. And for the people that haven't watched my previous video, I'll explain what these do and why they need to put it on this. So first off, I decided to disable boost player contrast. Um, in my previous video, I also said this, but when I was playing CSGO, I had this disabled. For some reason, I was playing uh, with it on enabled, but I decided to disable it again. So just put it on disabled. Wait for vertical sync. Vertical sync is ass, just disable it. Never put it on enabled. All right, so multi-sampling, anti-aliasing. So I had this one on 8 MSA um, in CSGO, but since CS2 got released, I decided to put it on 4 MSA. Um, the game has been running really good i haven't had fps problems uh lag spikes any of that so um just put it on four or maybe you can try to if you're still having lag problems you should go for two i feel like eight is just overkill now and not a lot of people not a lot of pros use it anymore uh, there's still a few that do it because they used to in csgo but i feel like four or two might be better now so global shadow quality definitely put this one on high 
very important because in this game shadows are really overpowered sometimes you can see the shadow before you can see the player so if you would put it lower than high you would give yourself a disadvantage and you don't want that do you so put this one on high model texture detail i decided to put this one on low you don't really need anything better than low so just put it on low texture filtering mode i've been using billionaire since i started playing cs so um that's why i'm still using it and i won't change that um you should put it on billionaire as well this one has been working for years for me so why would it not work for you shader detail put this one on low you don't need anything better than that particle put this one on low you don't need anything better than that ambient occlusion put this one disabled you don't need it just disable it high dynamic range i have decided to put this one on quality uh, I've seen people use performance, but a lot of pros are using quality and I've seen a lot of videos of people saying that you need to put it on quality because it's better. I don't really have an explanation behind it, but I put it on quality and I get more kills than I do when I put it on performance. So I guess quality is better. Again, same story. I don't really know what it is, but I've been playing with it disabled since the S2 got released and a lot of pros use disabled. So Nvidia Reflex low latency. Um, compared to the previous video and the previous video I had this enabled, I decided to disable it now. Um, since I've disabled it, I've been playing better and the game has been feeling smoother, so that's why I decided to keep it on disabled. Well, HUD edge position, uh, well, it's settings for your HUD, just put it on this. So, audio settings, um, there's not a lot to talk about here, I just have my master volume up to 100, my windows volume is 35, I use natural EQ profile, LR isolation on zero, Perspective correction, I decided to put this one off. Um, I feel like I have better positional awareness when it's turned off. Um, so I would recommend turning it off, but you can test it out and uh, see what works best for you. But I feel like turning this off is the best option. Then I have VoIP on 80%, which is not that important. And I have everything on zero. Uh, if there's one I could recommend turning on, it would be the 10 second warning. So you can hear the 10 second warning of the bomb, but I just play with it turned off. And um, I feel like I have enough game awareness to know when it's 10 seconds. Uh, so I don't really need this 10 second warning, but if you're a new player, I would recommend turning this one a bit higher so you can hear that it's only 10 seconds left. All right, let's get into the game settings. These are pretty long, so if you want to, you can pause the video. I'll talk about a few important ones, but if you want to get everything just the same as me, just pause the video and you can copy it. So max acceptable matchmaking ping, well they have added this thingy where you can see uh, how much MS you need to play on a server close to you. Uh, I've put mine on 50, I've been playing on 50 for like years because it has been on 50 since years ago. Uh, I've never had lag or connection problems to the server so I just kept it at 50. You know, I actually hadn't noticed this setting, display network connection issues. This one is a really interesting one. I'm going to keep it disabled, but it might be interesting if you have uh, problems connecting to servers or network problems that you would turn this one on so you can see what the problem is. Um, if you're trying to find out how much uh, max acceptable matchmaking ping you want, uh, you might want to turn this one off uh, on until you find the right max acceptable ping. Max acceptable game traffic bandwidth, I've put this one on unrestricted. I've been using it for years, uh, just keep it at unrestricted. All right, these are my HUD settings. Uh, there's not a lot to talk about, but I recently I've changed my HUD color to bright white. That's something I want to point out. So people that have already watched the previous video know that I changed this. I've been really enjoying playing with bright white and I think I'm gonna stick with bright white. Uh, it feels and looks good. So that's why I kept this one. I used to play on light blue. So if you want, you can put it on light blue, but I feel like bright white is a really good one. So here you got my communication and scoreboard settings. One thing I would recommend turning off is the allow animated avatar setting. 
Uh, it's really distracting when there's a lot of animation on top of your screen, so that's why I turned this one off. So my item settings, um, one I would recommend changing is the detach silencer. I would put this on secondary fire because in some situations you want to take off your silencer of your M4, um, so the silencer doesn't like poke out from around the corner or something. So I feel like having this disabled is really bad. Like if you don't want to use it, just don't use it, but you might need it sometimes so put it on secondary fire and here you have my crosshair settings i will also put the crosshair code in the description so you can just copy the code click on share or import paste the code here and click on import keyboard and mouse while well, i've been playing on two sensitivity i've been playing on two sensitivity since i have been playing csgo uh, I'll just go over all the settings so you can pause and copy them but I don't want to talk about every keybind that I have. Future me, I'm a fucking idiot, I forgot to record my NVIDIA settings. I also have these in my previous video settings guide, but I wanted to put them in this one as well. Nothing has changed, so if you still have the settings from the previous video, you don't need to change anything. But I'll go over these for the people that haven't watched that one yet. I just start by going to adjust image settings with preview. I put it on performance, use my preference performance. Then I go to manage 3D settings and uh, basically everything is correct already. Uh, there's not a lot of to change, uh, but you can pause the video and change if anything isn't correct. But if you put it on performance, it should be all correct. Then go to change resolution, make sure to put your refresh rate on the highest one possible and I play on a digital vibrance of 100. You can change this at adjust desktop color settings. I just put this on 100. I've been playing with that since I've started playing CSGO and that's the way I like my uh, the color of my monitor so that's why I put it on 100%. And then lastly go to adjust desktop size and position and put your um, scaling mode on full screen and perform scaling on GPU. Uh, override the scaling mode is set by games and programs also needs to be turned on for your main monitor. If you have a second monitor like me, uh, for the second monitor I use a display, perform scaling on display. For the main one I use GPU, this is better for games for some reason. That's everything for the NVIDIA settings, back to old me. All right, another important one is the loadout that I've been using. So the loadout I've been using is still the same as in the previous video. I just use USB, Dualis, B250, 5.7, Deagle. I use Nova, Swag 7, UMP, MP9, MP7, FAMAS, M4A1S, M4A4, Scout and Alp on CT side and 4T side. I use Glock, Dualis, P250, Tech 9, Desert Eagle, Nova, XM, UMP, Mac 10, MP7, Galil, AK, Scout, AVP, and SG. So recently, CS2 has added back workshop maps, so my warm up routine completely changed, and I would love to show you what I do now. I go into this map called uh, CS Hub, CS Stats Training Map. I will put the link in the description so you can just click on it and add it to your workshop maps. So this map has all kinds of different settings. You got Rush, where the bots rush you. You got Shuffle, where the bots just run around and you can kill them. And you got Range, where the bots are just static. So honestly, I haven't been really doing something special. Um, I've just been like putting them in the range on a static setting. And I've just been like spraying, warming up like this. But like I said in my tips, video you shouldn't just put your crosshair on an enemy shoot and warm up like that you should also practice your flicking so when i'm warming up 
well, first, like I showed you, I would just start by shooting at the enemies, but then I would start trying to flick, trying to play outside of my uh, game area, trying to flick outside of that, right? Maybe go for like a spray. I'm really missing a lot, but y you get it. Like just flicking. Then you can go back to just spraying on them a bit. Flicking and spraying. Something that's really good to practice as well is your spray transfer. Even though I'm missing a bunch, I think you get it, right? When I'm done with practicing with the AK, I usually like to go back to AWP and Deagle because um, I mainly play AK, AWP and Deagle. Uh, with this, uh, these ones, I would also practice like a ton of flicking. As you can see, my flicking is really good. <laughs> With the AVP, I like to practice everything. I like to practice flicking, quick scoping, no scoping. Uh, also, yeah, that's a problem that happens a lot on this map. If you shoot this by accident, your gun changes. Uh, if you don't want that happening, just put this unlocked and then you don't have that problem. But I also practice no scoping a lot because in a lot of situations you need to no scope. And I. I I mean, as you can see in my videos, I'm really good at no scoping, so... Just, I, I try to do stuff that is out of my comfort zone, if that makes sense. Like, I try to get kills that I know I usually wouldn't, if that makes sense. Like, this guy is just standing still in front of me. It's an easy hit, I can just aim and kill him, right? But... I want to practice stuff that I'm not good at yet. Um, so like practice hitting people that I usually wouldn't hit, like one that's far away. That's why I like trying to practice my flicking a lot or my no scoping. I I'm, uh, I'm getting carried away with practicing, but this is how I warm up. Um, try to warm up by aiming on them but also try warming up by flicking between them. This is very different from what I used to do on CSGO, but on, uh, because on CSGO I would play Rush, but for some reason Rush is really bad on this map. I, j I just don't like it, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would recommend just moving around a bit in this game, in uh, static game mode, and just trying to practice your flicking and all that stuff. I'm really... <laughs> I'm really starting to stutter, man. <laughs> it's because I've been recording for a pretty long while, but I think you get the general gist of it. So this is how I warm up. Uh, if you need any more tips, I have my tips video on my channel. If you want to see my old video settings guide, uh, which I go way more into depth uh, about my settings, but I just wanted to give an updated settings guide uh, to my viewers and maybe new people that discover me. These are the settings that I've been using. This is the way I warm up and practice. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and we're close to 250 subs, so you can share the video with people if you want, and that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.